everyone. This is Ashley Tiffany, and you're now watching Stay on TV. Now we're back at IMI Studio for a special, special episode. And today, it's, it's March, guys. It's March. So you know what that means. is Women's History Month. And I'm so excited for that because we need to talk about what's going on in the world right now with women. And currently, Stay on TV decided to have a panel discussion with women and media. So now let's meet the, the guests that I have here. Well, thank you for that introduction. Thank you, <laughs> thank um, you for being on the show, everyone. Thank you for way. having us. <laughs> um, my name is Darissa, and I am a on-air personality and host. My name is Sanji, and I'm a multimedia producer and reporter. My name is Abby, and I'm an a and and I'm also into t TV and film. I'm Edie. I'm a web blogger and creator of MadAtMeOrYourself.com. Hi, I'm Janelle Forrester. I am a creative, soon-to-be blogger, music, everything that's fun, and I'm currently at Vice Media. Nice. I want to say thank you guys for coming on to this show. I really appreciate it. This is my first time I'm hosting like a women's panel discussion, and it's very important because women in media right now, we're kicking it. We're kicking it. And we're all black and Latina representing hey. too. So that's perfect. So um, we're all like in different stages in our career. So I just want to like take a step back and like to, to actually like how did y'all all start it and why y'all wanted to do this basically? Um, well, I guess me first then. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I just, I really wanted to do this, like, since I was a little girl. Um, I remember one of my first memories, actually, was watching Oprah in the living room. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was in an interracial adoption. So when I first watched Oprah, it was, like, my first my first time seeing like a black woman on on air and on television so I was like yo this is dope so I just became obsessed with watching Oprah so like every day I would get home and like watch Oprah and like you know I didn't even understand the concept of the Oprah show but I just knew I wanted to kind of aim towards that so in high school you know I got on my journalism team in college I I was a reporter and then when I graduated I knew that this you know New York is the number one market for media and market for what I want to do and I just kind of dove into it I started you know I, I started out as a production assistant and you know working long hours you know what production is it's really hard and um I kind of just worked my way up and, and now I'm a reporter nice. <laughs> for me it all started in high school because I used to talk a lot I was like the the talkative clown in class and my mom every time she came to like parent teacher conferences she always heard the same thing Sanji's a pleasure to have in class but she talks too much <laughs> so I decided I decided to join um the first like announcements what you call it like announcements things in in, in high school yeah, yeah, yeah. so I so I started with that so I would say good morning everyone hello do the do the pledge of allegiance and all that stuff and I used to do announcements for everyone in class um and it became a ritual every morning and um, in high school, after high school, I became dormant with my dream. Like, I didn't know what to do after high school. So in college, everything, my dreams kind of just were put aside okay. until I transferred to City College. And I started doing, like, side work for, like, New York Times Magazine. I did, like, a reporting gig for them. Okay. I did, like, Gimlet Media, a little, uh, like, podcast transcribing. So after that, I, I got a job being a reporter and a multimedia producer. And ever since then, you know, that's, that's how it's been. But I try to, like, do a lot of things. And one of the main things I do is volunteer places. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to learn. A lot of girls that want to start off like, like we did, they need to learn that they can loan themselves voluntarily and grow their career from there so that's how it started for me um how i started um i well i always wanted to be into in tv and film but music i just started in 2015 so basically one day i just decided to put a cypher together and ever since then it just like attracted rappers and it just grew from there like i just started doing it over and over i started promoting people music on my instagram and then it just as time went on, I noticed I wanted to be an A&R, and that's it. <laughs> um, with me, I've always been a talker. Like, I've always been going on rants. I always had something to say, unpopular opinions all the time. <laughs> <laughs> on social media, it's always a tweet with me, yeah. unpopular opinions. So I felt like I should have a channel where I can speak on 
what needs to be spoke about, it, especially in the black community, because this is my these are my people that I care about the most. I care about everyone, but I am a black woman. So I just decided to start it up and just put out articles and blogs about you know anything that comes to mind. Cool. So I've always had a love for music and um, I worked, I always worked all my life. I feel like I've always been working. I always got a job, <laughs> always had to get the money. So I worked at McDonald's one time in high school and I worked on a drive through I was like, okay. So I had to talk to people all the time, orders. And one customer said to me, he's like, hey, are you real? I'm like, yes. <laughs> he, was like, he, was like, he was like, yo, you should be on the radio. And I'm like, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, <laughs> oh, that's I'm cool. like, okay. Um, so, like, time went on, and then um, I went to college. Still didn't really know what I wanted to do. I love fashion, music, everything. I knew I loved entertainment overall. So I went to college, and I got introduced to a club called WFIT, and that's when I started my own radio show. That's when they were just handing out radio shows back then, you know? So they handed me a radio show. I figured it out, and I had a show called The Trap, The Hustle of Hip Hop. And I was I was interviewing different artists, underground artists. I eventually started working with um, different people, like Jack Thriller. Then I got to Power 105.1, and I started working with Amizi. Then I found my way working with Angie Martinez. And then I just did a whole bunch of different things. And I said, you know what? I don't want to, like, put myself in a box. So I said, what else in media can I do, like, other than radio, you know? That's when TV came in, and now I'm in production. And I'm still doing all these different things, but I always was taught that if you want to be in entertainment, you need to dabble in all these different things so you can know what, what entertainment is. Mm -hmm. Like, you love music, you gotta, you gotta start off at a record label. You have to know the inside and outs of whatever you decide to do. So that's what I did, and um, like I said, I'm now doing production. I'm a production assistant. Long hours, lots of, like, lots of work, but it's like helping me grow and manage my way up to the top to get to where I would like to be. Thank you for sharing that. Y'all all have like different stories. And I wanted to ask, like, how can we advance in our fields? Like, I know we're all into like reporting, entertainment, blogging. How can we advance as black women moving forward? And how can we help people come in? Definitely what Sanji said about volunteer. You know, a lot of people, we live in a generation where we want instant gratification, right? We see what's on social media and we see like, oh, this person's doing that. Oh, I need to do this and I need to. Yeah. No, that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. And I always tell the people that I mentor and my interns, um, what tastes better, food from a microwave or food from an oven? Food from an oh, oven, right? Mm -hmm. Food from an oven, it's it takes longer. It's but it's more substantial for your body. Treat your career the same way. Things when you when you really take the time and when you put in the work, when you work those long hours, when you go and just do the work, you're gonna reap the benefits. So I've always tried to put myself in positions where I'm gonna win. So if that's volunteering my time, if that's working for low wages. You know, I know this is not going to be forever. And everybody who's flexing and doing all this on social media and everything, they can do that. Let them. Mm -hmm. You're in your lane. You're working in your field. And you're going to get there. Yes. So so I just think, you know, put yourself in positions that that allow you to win, even though they're not the, the best desirable jobs or the best um, paying jobs or anything like that. Anything that's going to get you further to that end goal, do it. Oh, Who wants to go whoever <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right. Yeah. I agree with the volunteering thing. That's why I brought it up, too. Um, also, just speaking things into existence. No matter how corny that sounds, tell somebody about your dreams. Tell somebody about your aspirations, and they're going to push you, you know, forward to do it. Like, some of the ladies spoke about having their radio show. I forgot to mention that in the intro. I had a radio show at WHCR in Harlem. And had I not spoken to one of the girls that already had a show and was a personality on air, I would have never had that show. Because I was, like, afraid to take the next step. I was afraid to put a project out there because I wasn't prepared. I wasn't professional. I didn't know how to use the equipment. But all it takes is asking one question to a person that is up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just dabbling in it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Definitely closed, closed mouths don't get fed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, the young people need to understand that sometimes you're going to hear no. And you're just going to have to fight 
and get to where you need to go. Like, mm-hmm. be hungry. Like, be motivated. Stay connected. You know, sometimes you'll work, you'll intern at these places, and you'll just end your internship. And it's like, wait, like, why didn't you talk to this producer? Why didn't you try and talk to this host and stay connected, you know? You don't have to get their phone number, but you can get their email, you get their social media, and then gradually just keep, you know, let them know that you're still alive, that you're available, and you'll never know. Like, they'll have an opportunity for you, and that, that will open the door. And that's how I got a lot of my opportunities. I stay connected within my circle and I made sure that they knew that I'm still active, I'm still interested, you know, I didn't annoy them, but I just, you know, I basically just let them know like, hey, how's it going? Happy holidays, happy birthday, oh, congratulations on what you did. And just let them know that, hey, I'm very passionate, I'm very hungry and I'm very eager. So um, yeah, just speak up and stay connected. That's that's great advice. That's really great advice. And I noticed like um, a lot of us when we when we introduced ourselves, we all like said like different kind of titles. So how do you know like you want to do that specifically and not just like one thing? Because I would say producer, director, personality and stuff like how do you know to just stay on a path? And how do you know when you're moving around too much? Or is that necessarily true when people say are you moving around too much trying to do multiple things or should you just focus on one one angle I thought it was difficult for me to select a title when we were first introducing ourselves because I kind of dabbled in everything on my own projects and at work as well so I feel like if you feel prepared do it all a lot of the times in media things are connected to each other so if you're going to do producing, you can also do reporting. You can also do this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? So if you feel prepared and you have the, the correct support, then you can do it all. You don't have to yeah. necessarily label what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say I definitely agree with that. Um, there is sometimes... I know I'm the person, Some people say to me, like, you want to do everything. You want to do everything. And I'm like, yes, I do want to do everything. Um, but um, I just, I write things down and I just give myself realistic goals and expectations. You know, I say, okay, I want to do this. Let's see if I can get this done the X amount of time. I'll get it started. If it's not where I need it to go, I'm like, all right, maybe I'm not into it as much as I thought I was, but I don't tell everyone what I'm doing. That's another thing. Like, I keep things to myself until I know for a fact, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm launching this. I'm doing this. So I'll let everyone know. When you tell people things that you're interested in, other people come in and they cloud your judgment. And they say, hmm, well, you're you're into radio, so why would you want to be into TV? Like, oh, you're into music, fashion? Like, why would you want to do fashion? When it's like, wait, I could do them all. Like, Pharrell did them all. Kanye did them all. Like, everyone, like, these men did it all. Like, why can't me as a woman do it all too, you know? So sometimes you do have to keep things to yourself until it's time to, you know, launch that project or do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. That's a good response. Um, let's jump into social media because social media is very vital in our age now. And it, there's a lot to talk about with social media. And sometimes it, it, it is helping our career. Exactly. It's helping our career so much, especially with me doing Stay on TV. I promote it on, on IG first and Twitter, and then I take it to YouTube. And Um, My question is for you, Edie. Like, you're in, you're very social media savvy. Um, What topics do you bring up, like, on Twitter and IG, and how do you relate that to your blogs? Because you're very active on Twitter, and that's good. That's good. It helps your blog. Um, What what normally happens is it'll start off with, like, a question. It'll come up, why are we like this, or what do you guys think about this? And... It becomes like a topic. With Twitter, it's it's like a community of people. We call it Black Twitter, where we're all talking about the same thing. And based on like people's responses, of course, like I'm not gonna agree with everyone. People are not gonna agree with me. It starts off, I wanna write something about this. For example, we're talking about should men still have to pay for all the bills <laughs> when women are working. Um, I'm I'm indifferent to it, but everyone's responses were so like they were clouded by something that they were told in the in their past. So I feel like I want to I want to dig deep into that and talk about it. We need to figure out what's going on, and that's what normally happens. Okay. Anyone else? Like, how do y'all use social media for y'all platforms and media? 
I mean, I definitely think that that's dope. And, you know, you're you're actually, like, sparking a conversation and engagement. And, and actually, you know, I, that's why I started following you. I, I deleted my Twitter. But I actually, <laughs> actually, I actually started following you when I did have a Twitter um, account because I was looking at your posts. And I was like, yo, you, you have, like, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. You had some really interesting tweets. And it makes people want to get engaged. Yeah. And I think when you, like, make people get engaged with whatever it is, you're going to be, like, really successful doing social media. So, I mean, I'm not, like, the most, like, savviest social media person i mean you're definitely teaching me a lot about social media since i met you but um i'll teach you about those angles (laughs) (laughs) definitely but but i think when you are like offering something and i watched this video the other day it was like what are influencers influencing you know but when you can like influence someone Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it's like an engagement, like That's what you're saying, doing, yeah, yeah or yeah, like a conversation, really yeah, <laughs> you, you know, yeah. you yeah, can, exactly, <laughs> you can get like people in the masses coming to like follow you. So, yeah. so that's, you know, one thing that I've learned. For me, I'm going to be honest, it's hard to engage people on social media because, like, a lot of people think you're posting for likes and comments, right? I don't want to do that. That's a, that's a big thing. I want to ask you, like, how, how can you engage people more without the the promise of getting likes and comments because I don't necessarily care about the the clout too much I just want to put my my feet out there I want to show people look what I'm doing for like unrepresented um talent look what I'm doing for us you know Latin and black mm-hmm. like everybody that that doesn't get that that which how could I put this that notice that notice right I don't want to necessarily use social media to get the clout just recognition there's a difference I guess between both um i feel like definitely there's gonna be some things that you put out there that's not gonna get that much attention like i've definitely posted about my blog the first time and not got as much attention as if i said something crazy Mm -hmm. but i feel like it kind of takes time when people start to like know who you are because i know like a lot of my mutuals by like their name i know their kids names everything like that just from just from talking to them so i feel like they want to support me just because like i'm that I'm that, like, mutual to them, I guess. I even had people DMing me about, okay, this job is coming up. Like, do you want to, do you want to, want me to put your resume somewhere? And it just, just takes time to, you know, get that going. But, like, what, what should she post? Well, um, it would be interesting. It depends. It depends what your what your niche is. If you're, if you're, if it's music, then music videos, or it could just be, um, a lot of times there's trending topics. So if that can be related back to what you got going on, then it's going to be a click, a retweet, and people going to know what's going on, and then more eyeballs on what you got going on, and it just keeps so snowballing like that. So like, engage in black Twitter and, like, whatever they're talking about? Definitely, about? definitely. A lot of times, I'm on Twitter a lot, maybe a little more than I should be. <laughs> but sometimes I start the conversation up or I will continue the conversation. If it's something that I don't want my energy to be in because it's not always good energy, then I'll just kind of mm-hmm. take it back. Yeah. But what What's your end goals for your career? Where you hope to, like, become or where to go? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, the intro was already hard <laughs> now. <laughs> Ain't no end goal. Why <laughs> y'all really like? What, where y'all hoping this to become? Like, wait, wait. I'm trying to go to the wanna... top, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go. I'm trying to be Oprah. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to, oh, okay. I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to do everything that God has me to be. Like, I want to do whatever it is. Like, whatever's in my path, whatever is suppo- what I'm, whatever I'm spo- supposed to do. I want to do it and I want to do it to the fullest. So I I actually cannot answer that question. Mm -hmm. I have an idea in my head of where I I see it ending kind of, but it's like whatever is in my path, I'm going to keep on going and I'm going to keep on going and I'm going to do it until I die. I just want to inspire girls like us, little girls that are looking to get into, you know, these, these avenues and break that glass where we're trying to get, you know what I mean? That's it. Like I really don't want to be rich. I really don't want to like get there. I want to be. I want to be. I swear to God, because once I once It'd I be become, nice. <laughs> it would be nice to do our projects a little easier. But I've done things without without having bread. Like 
anybody else has done it. You know, it's just the passion. You have to you have to remember to have the passion. That's what yeah. I, I just want to do something with passion. That's it. And just love what I do. Which I do now, just that I'm broke, baby. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> don't say you're broke or you're going to stay broke. Just say you don't got it right now. I'm not that. You don't got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't got it right now. I'm not that broke. I could eat. I could eat. I'm good. <laughs> um, The end goal. Hmm. I really don't know. Like, I just want to do it. I know I want to do it all. Like, I want to do a lot of things. Like, no limit. Just, I want to be big, though. Like, I want to be known for making an impact in the world and the entertainment industry so i really don't know what would be the exact end goal i think for me it's not really an end goal maybe like a long-term goal i just want people to like really subscribe and care about the word i want to put in there i feel like i like to write and writing to me is like something people don't really get into anymore people like watching videos like Mm -hmm. watching pretty things Personally, I didn't want to do like a YouTube video because how you feel about my looks might cloud what mm. you what you think I have to say. So I just want it to be like everyone is reading what I have to say and telling other people the topics that I have to talk about. Um, I I just want to leave an impact on the on the world. I don't really want to be. I don't have to be famous. I just want to leave an impact. I want people to say, oh, Janelle Forrester did this, you know? And I just want to be able to be comfortable, live comfortably, and take care of the people who have always taken care of me. So that's really what I want to do eventually. Like, I don't know. I can't give you a title. Like, I want to be a mogul. I want to do like this. I do aspire to, I look at people who have done great things like Oprah, um, for instance. And she has this amazing speech that she did with Spellman. I recommend every colored person, woman especially, to watch it. Um, I think this was a speech in 2012. But it really defines of like who you are as a person. Like, who are you? How do you answer that question? Back to our introduction. It was like, all right, how do I answer this question? So, um, yeah, I wouldn't really give you a solid answer, but I do want to leave an impact, and I do want to be comfortable and take care of the people who um, I love and the people who have taken care of me. That's it. That's good. That's good. Y'all doing great so far. Like, amazing. (laughs) Um, But everything is not all sweet and and happy. Like, how how do y'all stay motivated to keep going? And I know it was like a point in time where it's just like, Y'all didn't feel like giving up, but y'all was kind of down. What yeah. what brought y'all back up to just keep on going and doing yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm triggered by yeah, that like, <laughs> Because I feel it sometimes. Sometimes I'll be like, yo, forget this stay on TV shit. But then I think about, like, my, my end goal and what kind of, like, impact I want to leave on this world. It's bigger it's bigger than this music shit to me. Like, it's, it's more like I want to help people, not just in the music industry, but just overall. I feel like I just had that moment yesterday. Like, I always have those moments. Like, but I think what helps me and what keeps me motivated is just, like, remembering why you want to do this and just having faith that you know you're going to get to where you need to get to one, one day. Like, even if it takes years, like, just know, like, I'm going to get there and I'm not going to stop here. So that's what keeps me motivated. Um, I think I just had to stop, like, comparing myself to other people mm-hmm. and saying where they are. Janelle's always been my friend. But Janelle, she's always had something going on. So I'm just like, dang. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Janelle's path is not my path. Mm-hmm. So I just have to keep my eyes going where it's going. And whatever is for me won't miss me. Like, I won't. Mm-hmm. And there's always going to be times where you're going to wake up nervous about what you do. And maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm not doing this right. Mm -hmm. But that means that you are passionate about it. If you lose Mm -hmm. that, then you just you just don't care about it anymore. Mm -hmm. When I used to I used to dance when I was younger and my dancers would say, oh, if you lose your stage fright, that means you don't care about dancing anymore. And that's kind Mm -hmm. of the same thing. Like if you stop having those thoughts, then it's maybe you should. That's nice to think about it like that. And piggybacking, piggybacking, can't speak, <laughs> of what you said of, like, I was always doing something and then maybe you felt like you weren't doing something. Like, I felt that way, too, with other people who who aren't in this room or, like, who, I'm, who you guys may not know. Um, so, like, everybody is always looking at another person to say, like, hmm, this person's doing a, little, a, a lot. Like, maybe I'm not doing enough, but 
you just have to, like you said, like stay in your lane and keep your eyes on your prize because back to social media too, you don't know what happens behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Like you don't know what this person had to do to get into the building, mm -hmm. what they had to do to get on top. Like I've seen a lot, I've heard a lot just being in the music industry and I have even been in it for that long, you know what I'm saying? So um, people do what they have to do and that doesn't mean that's right, but they do it. So I've learned to just, you know, just keep moving forward. Sometimes log off social media, mm -hmm. don't even look. Or just, you know, just keep my eyes on my prize because everything ha takes time. And even though it wasn't the time to happen for you, it might, it's going to eventually happen whenever it's right. right. However I said that, I said a lot of words just now. But, um, but yeah, like you just have to keep motivated by focusing on what you're doing right. overall. Yeah. I would say what keeps me inspired is hearing feedback from other people about the projects that I put out personally. And also hearing people ask for advice mm -hmm. even most of the time it's men it's surprisingly like they generally want to know like how i keep so motivated how i keep doing things how i keep putting things out girls too women too but mostly just people that that need that that confidence something i've always had was confidence mm -hmm. i've always had confidence in putting my stuff out there i could be a little too humble like i want to be comfortable like you said <laughs> i take back the not being rich thing i don't like it <laughs> But but I just I just like to help people and I feel like that's what keeps me motivated, helping and getting to know people and their stories. That's what I love about what I do. Um so yeah, I guess the the question was how do we stay motivated? Yeah. Um I I think about whenever I get like in a funk or when I'm just like just in a rut and I just feel like my career is not going anywhere, I think about the times where I used to be in in these funks. And I got out of it and something else came along. And I just always know that this too will, will pass. Mm -hmm. This too shall pass. Right. And I just, I think about that every time I get down and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going to do this because I did this mm -hmm. yeah. and I did this. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think about all the times that I've ever like, you know, wanted something and then I got it and then something else happened and then I got it. So I just think you just have to always like continue to think about that. And you will, you know, because a moment is just a moment. It's not yeah. the rest of your life. You know, you're not going to stay at a crappy job forever. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to go into your 30s or your 40s miserable. You, it's literally just one moment. Right. Yeah. So I guess I just I just think about that. And lastly, I just want to say, like, be grateful, mm -hmm. um, because even though you may not like the position you're in or the circumstances you're in, there's somebody who would die to mm -hmm. be where you are, like die to do 12 hour days, to die to do whatever you're doing, yep. because they're so hungry and they're going to find a way to get out of that situation that you're in and make it to the top. Mm -hmm. So I always just say be grateful for whatever position you're in, because somebody we would gladly slide right in. And it's usually the people who be like, I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Like, oh, okay, and you're listening to these people. You leave in your position. Like, oh, I'm tired of this. They wouldn't do it. And then, boom, they're in your position. And now you're like, okay. Exactly. Like, you know. Better. Yeah, like, hmm, okay. Right. Should I kept that to myself. So, but, um, yeah. but, yeah, so just always be grateful in whatever position you're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you guys said it best. You said it best. Now, um. It's 2019, and then this decade, it's it's kind of different, like dating, and especially like in our field, we're always busy. Oh, we're always God. busy, and it's kind of like hard sometimes mm. to keep your personal life separate from your 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 business life. So how do you like how do you do that with dating, and like what is dating to you in 2019? <laughs> 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah, from, I just want to clarify. So you mean, like, how do we keep it separate? How do we keep dating and our business separate? Yeah, yeah. How, how do we that? balance it? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've been luckily, lucky enough to have my boyfriend at every company <laughs> that I've, I've worked at in New York, at least. So um, it's, it's a great balance because, you know, he sits where he sits and I sit where I sit and then I, we go home. But... Um, as far as like balance, you know, and I'm just speaking from my experience, we don't bring any like arguments that we had into work. We always keep it professional at work. Um, 
And, you know, you know that just from working with us, like we just work is work and home is home and business is business. So if I need him to edit something for me, this is business that I'm talking. I don't I don't portray it like I'm your girlfriend. Can you edit this? No, we're this is my this is business. I know that this is also your business and we're going to handle business. Um, So I think that just knowing like this, this is. You know, this is business and this is my, mm-hmm. my personal life. And you just have to draw those boundaries. Oh, so you balance it well because, yeah, you do have a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. I've been with my boyfriend for the past, like, four and a half years now. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, y'all wait, single? Wait. They single over here. <laughs> Yo, zoom in on them. Put that, put that social media on the screen right here. <laughs> hit them up, hit them up. <laughs> but now, nah, so I've been... <laughs> yeah, and then after y'all answer that question, like, how y'all feel about dating in general? Right. I've been in a relationship for like four and a half years now and he's not in media at all. So it's been a little difficult balancing like when I'm editing something or I'm working and he doesn't understand it, like how much hours I have to put into this work. And a lot of times I bring the work home, but I also need to work on that. I need to work on keeping the work at work Mm -hmm. sometimes. I just feel like I get obsessed. I get like, oh my God, I need to do this because I need to share this with people. I need to put this on YouTube. There's a deadline. There's a this, there's a that. And he's just like, yo, but like... yeah. Netflix and chill real quick. <laughs> but he's understanding that more. And the more we communicate and the more he understands um, this is the business that I chose, the easier it gets for us. Yeah. Just balancing time. I have something to add on to that. Um, oh, my bad. Uh, oh, you wanna oh, no, no. I just wanted to add on to what you were saying, though. Finding a partner that understands your work schedule is so real because if they're – especially in the industry that we're in where it seems like we're all in media – if you don't have a, a guy that is understanding, it's not going to work out. Mm-hmm. It's not going to work out because he has to know, like, you, I have to be your ride or die. Mm. That's just, and that's just it. Okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're the single side over yeah. here. Hey. <laughs> um, so, like, dating more. So, you have to kind of, my problem is finding someone who's as, motivated to get where they're going as me sometimes I feel like people are like so far ahead in their career that kind of intimidates me like Mm -hmm. dating them and then I also feel like people aren't doing enough and kind of turns me off Mm -hmm. from them so I feel like it is a little difficult to kind of figure that out it's just dating in especially in New York it's pretty it's kind of hard because a lot of people I feel like everyone knows each other it's like Mm -hmm. a small small world of people it's not that (laughs) Brooklyn is and then like (laughs) (laughs) and then if you want to date outside the borough if it's like a long distance relationship so it's just like that's that's how New York we are like Long Island is a long distance (laughs) but like nah (laughs) Not going there. And then I feel like a lot of people are clouded by what they think a relationship is supposed to be. Yeah. Like they think that oh, uh, if I, if you don't post me mm, yeah. by one oh, month, that's, then that's so corny. I just that's feel so like corny. you know it. It is like it doesn't matter. Any of that stuff does not matter. Right. Or but like, do you take that personal? Like, does the person have to put you up? He doesn't have to put put me up. Um, yeah, if he no. does, that's cool. <laughs> but like, I don't know. Just don't embarrass me. Yeah. You see, like. Yeah. If you post all your uh, your girlfriends and your guy friends, I can be throwing up in there. <laughs> <laughs> but what if he posted like his ex and then he, but then he never posted you? Like he posted. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to know. Like, what if he were like he was in a relationship before you and he posted her, but then you guys got into a relationship and he was like. I'm but maybe maybe that's why he doesn't post me. Like, what if he, like, everyone was in his business? Because I've been in a relationship where everybody knew my business. People I didn't know. It's like, yeah, you're so-and-so's girlfriend. <laughs> I, I'm Edie. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. So I feel like maybe the next time he wanted to be more private. Okay. Or maybe he just didn't want it to be like, okay, you broke with this person. Now you with this person. What if we don't work out? You're going to post the next person. It's like, we know everything that's going on with y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let me give you a tip, girl. Date a man that doesn't have social media. My boyfriend doesn't have anything. So we're good. We never had a problem with, like, any of that stuff. He's not, like, into the pettiness or anything. Like, you didn't post me and blah, blah, blah. So we're good in that avenue. I think that's why we lasted this long. (laughs) But also I wanted to say that, like, if you're trying to um, get within your career, how do you even meet people? Because you you really don't have that much time. You you don't have the energy to go to all these events to meet people. You you don't have (laughs) But would you want someone in your career? Because Sanji, you're dating outside your career. I don't want somebody like to, like you know, like lose, lose. <laughs> you don't want somebody to have you lose focus. Like so, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't do 
too much dating right now. And it's like I'm fine with it because I just want to stay focused and build who I am first before I even try to start all that up. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> um, I also am not doing that much dating right now because I want to stay focused. And I think it's very, I, f- I think I intimidate a lot of guys. I'm just very, like, well strong. I know what I want. If you don't give it to me next like i'm just very straightforward and um some guys appreciate it usually the older guys who appreciate it but then i'm like oh they already like know what they want to do and you know like i want to grow with somebody or like do all these things and they're already like doing their own thing so i'm like oh why can't get somebody like my age who like could figure it out you know so so gone um (laughs) so basically um and i work with a lot of men so i always have men around me and it's, that was a lot when I was doing radio. And that was also an intimidating thing because it's like, oh, like, why are you always with this person? Or why are you always with that person? It's like, well, this is my, this is the person I work with. Like, these are the people's in the studio. Like, what do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? So um, I just, I'm very, um, I'm very secure of who I am as a person. And it's just very hard to find a guy who wasn't insecure. And I'm still trying to, like, well, I'm not trying to date right now, but, like, eventually down the line, I need to find somebody who's sure of themselves and who aren't insecure. And that's... that's Do you care if the person's in your field or not? Um, I really would love to have somebody who's not in my field. I want a doctor. Like, what's good? (laughs) Like, hello? Um, yes, like, I need a doctor. Um, but yeah, I I'm really wouldn't mind at all. It would be easier if they're in my field because they'll know where I'm going through and understand. But then also a person outside of my field would, like, give me the, I would get to know, like, what they're into and not have to talk about work all the time or this person, that person um, when I come home. So um, it really doesn't matter to do you feel like uh, all of you guys that social media kind of messed up like dating because like you said before, like you said before, you have to like be posted and stuff and like social media just started what like 15 years ago like Facebook and IG and stuff. So do you feel like it, it takes a toll on your relationship or single people and people? I don't have an experience with that, but I do think that social media um, is not like that. It's not healthy. I- but it also depends, like, how you use it and, like, the type of person you are. Like, if you're a dirtbag and you're just, like, pulling up into all these girls' DMs and you have a girlfriend, then it's like, okay, you're using it the wrong way. So, I don't know. I think it creates, like, unhealthy standards. Mm-hmm. Like, you see that um, people who have boyfriends that could afford certain things, their boyfriend's buying them yeah. Chanel bags every week. And it's like, you want your boyfriend who's not there yet to do all this stuff for you. And then you kind of put him down because he can't do that. Or, like, you know, things like that. It's just not good to, like, look at someone else and what they're doing. Or sometimes you get an influence of what you feel like a relationship should be like. Mm-hmm. And it's not your genuine thoughts. It's like you're being led to that um, decision. And people have groupthink and they can't think on their own about what they want. You might like somebody and someone convinces you on social media that that person's not doing nothing. Or that person's not right for you. You need something else. So I just feel like you should just take that away. Take social media as what it is and not let it consume you. Yeah, like, I feel like you shouldn't, like, like what she said, like, sometimes you'll see a couple, and they're posting all this on social media, but it's like, you don't know if they're really happy, like, you don't know if they arguing every night, like, you don't know if he's beating, like, you just don't know, so it's like, you can't just go by what you see on social media, because people don't show you, they show you what they want to show you, Mm -hmm. like, they don't show you the bad. Beyonce and Jay-Z, they look perfect, (laughs) nobody (laughs) knew he was, and nobody knew he was cheating on her, like, it's like, that's what I said, it all depends on, like, the type of person you are, like, if you know not to be the type of person, like, oh, you're looking at this and thinking that's, that they all good, Mm -hmm. it just depends on who you are. Mm -hmm. I was just going to go off of what you said. Yeah, I definitely think it creates unhealthy standards. And I feel like I, before I, I met my boyfriend, I definitely had unhealthy standards. Because I would look on Twitter and I would look on Instagram and I would be like, oh, this person, this is how a relationship is supposed to go. But it's like, no, that that's so false. Like, you know, you should really just be friends with a person and then build on that. Because I think before 
I used to have like whenever I got with someone, I would have like an expectation like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And we're going to you know what I mean? And I would have like this picture in my head based on false expectation. Like this is not real. This is not real. Right. So so I think, I yeah, it's social media, you know, yeah. log off. <laughs> How important is networking and do you feel like it's necessary to have a mentor? A men yeah. Well, as I mentioned earlier, networking is very important because it opens up opportunities that you could build on in the future. For instance, like I got a lot of my produc production roles by keeping connected with my producers and they're like, oh, this show is starting or this is a new season for X, Y, and Z. Like, do you want to like be on board? And it's like, yeah, definitely. But if I didn't stay connected with them, I wouldn't have known about that opportunity. As for mentors, mentors, I believe are very important, but they're very hard to get. Uh, to get a good, a lot of people, they want their mentors to be people who are well-established, famous in the industry. Like, they want Oprah, they want Yandy, they want Karen Civil, they want like all these people who are like at the top doing their own thing. And it's a little intimidating to those people because they don't know who to trust. They're like, okay, like these young girls, like they want to come in and they want me to be their mentors or whatever. But like, I don't know if they want me to, are they using me or do they really want my help? And that's really a question that you have to ask because there are a lot of people who are like yeah I want to be next to this person and that person just so I could get to the top but they're also thinking in their head like hmm like do I am I really trying to help them so sometimes you have to go to you have to have mentors who are within your company sometimes you know you, you can't reach the president sometimes but you could get to that producer you could talk to that coordinator you could talk to these people and they could connect you to the if you're not in that building yet how do you get to those people um well, what I was talking about was more so already being in the building. But if you wanted to talk to people who are out, who are in buildings that you haven't been in yet, I would say um, tell them what you could do for them. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, like my name is, this is what I'm interested in. I could do X, Y, and Z for you. Because they, they've they done so much for so many people. Like what can you do for them now? Like what what's an exchange, you know? build tr Build the trust that they're looking for and then from there that could be a dm that could be an email it's very easy to get emails mm -hmm. first dot last name at company oh, yes. okay yeah. like <laughs> people don't know that but it's mm -hmm. first dot last name at company that back falls first initial last name like there's you could always get an email like you find one email and you'll always be able to find other emails so um just keep trying and keep trying and go to events and network and you know you'll see eventually just keep connecting with people but it doesn't happen overnight it really doesn't oh i definitely think mentorship is important but um i just started reading this book new book called uh and, if, and please don't edit this out because i really want people to know this book it's called forget a mentor get a sponsor and what a sponsor is is not like a mentor because a mentor will give you advice just from what they've went through in their career and they look at you like a young them right but a sponsor doesn't have to be your skin color they could be a white person. They could be a, a Hispanic person. They could be someone, an Indian person, anything. And they see something in you, but it's an exchange. We can help each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that instead of looking for mentors, people need to start looking for sponsors, people to get them in the door. And I think that people don't really know how to network either because I receive a lot of emails since I since coming into this position at BronxNet, I received so many emails from just Instagram and they're young girls and they're pretty much just like selling themselves, right? Mm -hmm. They're like, I did this, I did this and I did this mm -hmm. and I did this. And I don't, no one cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that in, but in so many words, like you, that doesn't make you special, really. I think if you were to ask a question to them, like, what are you looking for? What are, you know, what do, what do talent at your station have? Um, what are some ways that I can, you know, can mm -hmm. I hop on a phone call with you? Mm -hmm. When you start asking questions like that instead of really just selling your resume, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to start getting more responses and more phone calls and emails. And it's just like planting seeds. 
it's planting seeds because this person is going to that's that's how sponsorship is created they're going to respond to your email they're going to hop on the phone call but you're not asking them for a job Mm -hmm. you're not trying to sell yourself to get a job you're just like okay i just want to let you know i'm here Mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna send some work your way they're going to give you feedback all right, boom, a position opens up. Hey, I just saw a position open up. Is it possible that you could put a, you're in the door. So I think that, you know, take out this notion that you have to like sell your resume because no one cares about your resume. I'm just going to be honest with you. No one does. Sell, network efficiently. Just don't network for the sake of networking. Yeah. Networking is very important as we all stated. Um, going to these group places like things like this even where we're meeting each other and we're talking to each other about the skills that we have and all that that's important having people to support you is important um but i feel with networking you have to be confident when you present yourself to someone that you you want to like exhibit yourself to in a way it's important to know who you are and what you want to do and like darissa said don't try to sell yourself because then you're making yourself seem like you're better than you know what i mean like you want to present them with something you can add to the company or what you can learn More than anything, it's not really what you know. Like people say, it's who you know. But it's also what you can learn from where you're going, I feel. Anyone else? Ladies? I know. Network is important. (laughs) (laughs) It is important. But yeah, my co-producer said we have to wrap it up. Nah. Yeah, (laughs) we hit the mark. But it was so great, guys. Thank you. I learned so much from each one of you. And any last words you want, you would like to say to people that's like watching or a young female that's trying to get in this industry? Any last comments? Mm-hmm. Don't give up. Oh. Tell her. Tell her. What don't. Are you looking at? Yeah. <laughs> um. Don't give up. Don't let anybody put you in a box. Like, don't think you can only do one thing. If you're into everything you can do everything even if you have to do it one at a time but you can do whatever it is you want to do um don't be afraid to contact people i've gotten dms all the time from internships that i've been at hey like i'm about to apply for this position at this company i see that you interned there from your linkedin profile like how was it i'll keep it 100 with you and i'll let you know how it was with me and i'll tell you what you should what you should do i'll never tell you not to go into a position ever but i'll just tell you all right i interned here and this is was this was my experience and that's it and don't be afraid to keep contacting me and asking me because i'll always let you know like how it was like we're all i don't want to see anyone fail so i definitely would explain to you all right this is what happened in my department what's your department okay it might be different for you or x y and z I would say it's okay to have fear because having fear means you have to overcome it with courage. Mm -hmm. So when you want to enter into a new project or anything that you want to do, just go dive into it and ask any questions. I have someone here that's a supervisor at my position and I ask her questions all the time. Darissa knows this. There's things that I feel doubtful about, but you're always there to help. Ashley's always there to help. And anyone really, don't be afraid to just ask questions and dive in there. Do what you want to do with love and passion more than anything. (laughs) Oh, come on, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I, no, no, I didn't, but I want her to go. Do you want to go first? Or it don't matter. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, like, I don't know about everybody else, but, like, when we get into positions, and I really wanted to answer this, do you feel like you don't belong sometimes? Yes. I feel that way. Like, I feel like I don't have, like, is I'm not supposed to be at the table. Like, I'm supposed to not be there. Why do you feel that way? It's because, like, we, we, are, we are women of color. Mm-hmm. We're women of color. And my mentor told me, like, you're supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Wherever you go, wherever, wherever your career takes you, it's because you are absolutely supposed to be there. So that's what I just want to say is, like, you're supposed to be there. And I, I just really wanted to get that off my chest. Like, no, I might never see you all again, right? But, like, wherever y'all go, y'all are absolutely supposed to be there. Thank you guys for watching Stay On TV Women's History Month panel discussion with these ladies here. Thank you so much, guys, for coming.
We have Darissa, Sanji, Abby, Edie, Janelle, and you can follow them on Instagram. Look below right there. You see it on the lower thirds. Follow them. Ask questions if you want to know. Hit me up if you want to, if you have a question about media, uh, music, entertainment, marketing. And I'm just here to help. And we're sticking this out together. Damn, I wanted to talk about here, but we're going to do that on a part two. <laughs> we're going to do that on a part two. But now, guys, we're tuning out. Thank Bye. You, thank you, Ashley. Yeah. This was awesome. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I'm repping the prom. You, so <laughs> <laughs> you guys had great queens on the end. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we talked about our burrows one time.